Before starting this video, I do want to give a thank you to my patrons that support the channel. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you in the link down below. So with that, let's get into today's video. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. So within this set, I thought we were just going to mainly get vampires, pirates, and also dinosaurs and merfolk. However, we are also getting fungus. I will say this really caught me by surprise. The amount of fungus presents are in this set. What looks like to be the leader of all the fungus in the core is the Mycotyrant. So for one black and a green, we have an elder fungus. So what's very interesting about this is the fact that we have many different deities of gods. We also do have the elder fungus, and that's a very interesting type because it kind of reminds me of cards like Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath with the other Theros gods where it's an elder giant. It's very ancient and has a lot of wisdom. I feel like this could be the same with the Mycotyrant. It probably looks like the leader of the hive mind of the, all the fungus that live in the core. But to be honest, I don't know too much about the lore about the Mycotyrant. If you do want to let me know down below in the comments to kind of give me a little bit more details about what this uh, thing is about. But you clicked on this video not for a history lesson, but for an EDH deck specifically for the Mycotyrant. So let's dive into what this commander does. So it does have for one black and a green trample. Power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi or sapperlings. Also at the beginning of your end step, you create X one one black fungus creature tokens with this creature camp lock where X is the number of times you descended this turn. So this could be very powerful mainly because fetch lands will trigger off this because fetch lands are a permanent card type. Also other permanents whether they're in your library or on the battlefield or even from your hand if you discarded them some way, this could trigger off that. Obviously with the micro tyrant, the more creatures you do have on the battlefield that are sapperlings and fungi, the bigger this is going to be. Honestly not going to lie. After playing The Last of Us game and watching The Last of Us TV show, nothing scares me more than fungi, especially the way that the Cordyceps kind of latch onto their host. And based off this flavor, this is basically similar to Cordyceps where permanents enter the graveyard, they become fungus on the battlefield. I mean, you're not making that permanent type into a fungus, you're just making fungus tokens of those cards that you discarded or enter the graveyard. So if you haven't played The Last of Us or even uh, watched the TV show, I highly recommend it. Aside Aside from that, to give you an overview of this deck tech, I do want to talk about support cards for the deck, what's going to get you to that win. I'm also going to talk about some fungus and sapperling uh, tribal aspects, mainly sapperlings don't have a specific uh, creature type that is an actual card, but they do have a lot of token generators. I'll mention that later on in the video. Then after that, I'll talk about win conditions. So first of all, let's talk about support cards. There's a lot of things you can do to kind of improve your game plan as you're going along in the process. I first like to discuss card draw because that's the most important thing you can do in the game of Magic the Gathering. The best card draw option, and I mean the best card draw option in this deck, is absolutely Skull Clamp. This is an insane card in the deck because we are making a lot of fungi on the battlefield that are 1-1s. Basically every time we equip a fungi that's a 1-1 or a sapperling that's a 1-1 on the battlefield, we'll basically draw two cards because it'll kill it in the process. We will make the power of our commander a little less viable, making it shrink a little bit, but that's okay. I I prefer card draw any day of the week. Another card draw option I feel like is personally underrated is Plum the Forbidden. You basically pay two mana for this and you can sacrifice a token creature you do have on the battlefield like a fungi or a sapperling and you draw a card and lose one life. But if you want to, as an additional cost, you may sacrifice one or more creatures. So say for example, you sacrifice five creatures on the battlefield. You will then copy this spell, drawing an extra five cards on top of the other card you did draw. You will lose one life for each card you draw, but that's a small prize for drawing six cards. That's absolutely terrific. Aside from that, we do want to put permanent cards into our graveyard. A great way to do that is having a card like Skull Prophet. It acts as a mana dork. Also, it does have that other tap ability by putting the top two cards of your library into a, your graveyard. So if we don't need any mana to cast anything, we could just put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard, then trigger our commander later on at the beginning of our end step. A way more scary version of this would be Old Stick Fingers, mainly because it has that ability of basically putting a 
lot of creatures into the graveyard. The more you do pay into that X ability, the more you could just put creatures from your library into the graveyard. And at the beginning of our end step, we could trigger our commander to make a lot of fungi on the battlefield. There are also a lot of other ways we can mill ourselves. I do have the deck list down below in the description if you do want to go check it out. So I don't have to mention them all because I feel like they're kind of self-explanatory. But, but of course, we do want to talk about the big giant fungus army we do have on the battlefield and also the sapperlings. We want to make sure we could overwhelm our opponents so much so we can take advantage of utility creatures like Canker Bloom as well as Spore Crown Thalid. I can't tell you enough how great versatility Canker Bloom does have in this deck. It has that ability to sacrifice itself. We could trigger our commander at the beginning of end step when we do. We also could destroy a target artifact or destroy a target enchantment or proliferate. But you can only choose one of them which is the downside of it but honestly the versatility is very good in this card. And I will say I do like Spore Crown Thalid mainly because it's an anthem for our fungus and sapperling creatures. Aside from that another excellent card from the new set is Blood Rage Mycoid. It's basically a mini version of our commander when we do descend we create a 1-1 black fungus creature token on the battlefield. Plus itself is a fungus too so this could buff up our commander also trying to overwhelm our opponents with a lot of fungus on the battlefield as long as we keep descending. However if we really want to overwhelm our opponents we do have Tender Shoot Dryad which is incredible in this deck. It has that ability at the beginning of each and that's right each upkeep you create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Also on top of that, it acts as an anthem for our sapperlings, giving them plus two, plus two, as long as you have the city's blessing, which by the way is very easy to do because we have a lot of tokens entering the battlefield. As long as we have 10 of our permanents, we will have the city's blessing. So again, this is going to be so easy to do. But if we do want to put a lot of sapperlings on the battlefield, another way we could do that is using Mycoloth. This is incredible because it does have Devour too. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token for each 1-1 one, one counter on Mycoloth. So let's just say there's five sapperlings on the battlefield and you decide, hey, I'm just going to devour them with my Koloth. Then what you can do is put 10 1-1 one -one counters on my Koloth and at the beginning of your upkeep, you create a 1-1 one -one green sapperling creature token for each 1-1 one -one counter on my Koloth. So in that example, if you do have 10 1-1 -1 counters on it, you're going to be putting 10 sapperling creature tokens on the battlefield. That's absolutely ridiculous. Another way we could get a lot of sapperlings on the battlefield is by using a card like Skullbore Nexus. I'll tell you what, this is a very good magic card. It has that ability to be reduced based off the greatest power among creatures you do control, which will be very easy because if you do have a lot of sapperlings on the battlefield, your commander will absolutely be huge, and this could potentially just cost 2 green mana. It does have the ability whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die you create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base power and toughness each equal to the total power of those creatures oh yeah you also have that ability of paying two and tapping a double target creatures power until end of turn like our commander it does have trample so we could potentially knock out an opponent if we wanted to depending on how big our commander is also, there are a lot of win cons in this deck. I do want to focus on specific kind of combos, not really combos, but enough to kind of win the game by draining your opponents. For example, I thought of Mirkwood Bats. When you do descend a lot, your commander will trigger at the end step and make a lot of tokens on the battlefield depending on how much you descended. For each token you do put on the battlefield or a token that leaves the battlefield, each opponent will lose one life. Say, for example, you descended 10 times. Your commander will trigger at your end step, making 10 one ones on the battlefield. Then if if you do have Mirkwood Bats on the battlefield, you basically will drain your opponents for 10 life. So with that, you can kind of see the picture. Mirkwood Bats is excellent in the deck to kind of trigger with our commander to put a lot of tokens on the battlefield and drain our opponents. Another way you could win in this deck is of course by using Slimefoot the Stowaway. Of course we had to add this card in the deck for many reasons. It's a fan favor that everybody loves and is a combo engine because whenever a sapperling you control dies, Slimefoot will deal one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Plus you can't pay four colorless mana to create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token and there's a way we could abuse that in this deck by using cards like Ashnod's Altar and Parallel Lives to win the game. So basically how this engine will start is you could pay four mana to create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Because Parallel Lives is on the battlefield you'll make not just one token but you'll make two sapperling tokens on the battlefield. Then you can sacrifice both of those tokens to Ashnod's Altar creating four colorless mana. Because you did sacrifice those tokens Slimefoot will deal 
one damage to each opponent and you gain one life for each token you sacrifice. Then with that four colorless mana made off of Ashnod's altar, you can repeat the process by making more tokens on the battlefield and sacrificing them back and forth to drain out your opponents and also gaining your life. So that way you could win the game with Slidefoot the Stowaway. I will say what's very nice about this combo is the fact that each card separately are very good in the deck without the combo or with parallel lives you're just doubling the amount of fungi or saplings you make on the battlefield and if you do need extra mana Ashnod's altar is going to get you there and of course Slimefoot is a token generator so this is an easy include. But with that said that's going to do it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on the Myco Tyrant. I feel like this is going to be a very powerful commander. I do feel like personally that Slimefoot is a little bit of a better commander because it's a combo engine but it's a great card in the 99 too but seriously the Myco Tyrant is awesome. I do like the fact that it kind of buffs itself up kind of like a hive mind mentality. The more fungi you do have on the battlefield the bigger this is going to become. But let me know down below in the comments is there any cards that I did miss because I feel like I'm not too familiar with fungi compared to a lot of other people that are enthusiasts to it. So again I do feel like this is a very cool concept for a commander. Make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel and with that out of the way thank you for stomping by.